Dr. August Rosado, evangelist with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you so much for tuning in on this Thursday afternoon as we are coming to you live from our main headquarters here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. And so it is great to have each and every one of you with us for another Bible Prophecy Update. It is August 25th, 2022, and uh, we are right in what they would call the dog days of August. Yeah, I figure it has to be my name, the dog days of August. But uh, the summer is uh, winding down. And then before you know it, fall will be here. And so our, our speaking schedule is heating up more. And uh, we've had churches calling in, asking me to come and speak on Israel Bible prophecy and current events. And that's what we're going to be doing as we have a travel day uh, tomorrow, Friday. So just to give everyone a heads up, there will be no live stream tomorrow. My wife and I are going to be making our way down to Ohio, uh, Toledo, Ohio, where I am scheduled to preach at a five-day Bible Prophecy Conference at Faith Bible Baptist Church in Toledo, Ohio. That's going to be August 28th to September the 1st. It's been at least uh, five years or so since we've been in Ohio. And so uh, Tim Goodman, the pastor of Faith uh, Bible Baptist Church and a good friend of mine, uh, asked if we would come, I guess, instead of down to the Midwest. And uh, we said, absolutely. And so we're going to be with uh, Pastor Tim Goodman, all the people of Faith Bible Baptist Church. If you live in Toledo, uh, Wallbridge, or any of those surrounding areas, I want to give you a personal invite to come on out as I will preach all five days of this conference. Looking forward to seeing our friends, looking forward to making uh, new friends. And uh, we would love to see you at Faith Bible Baptist Church in Toledo, Ohio. And so you can go to the Faith Bible Baptist Church website in Toledo, and uh, all the information um, will be there, as well as my Facebook profile page. Uh, we've got the flyer up on there sent out by the church. And so uh, we are looking forward to see them. Uh, Pastor Tim Goodman called me um, yesterday and he says, uh, hey, listen, I know you guys are going to be coming in. It's going to be a little late in the evening, but he says, uh, I know you're a baseball fan, August. And so I know you're a big Red Sox fan. However, would you like to come uh, to a AAA affiliate game? The Toledo Mud Hens. I'm like, well, they're going to be playing the Worcester Red Sox. <laughs> I don't think they are. Uh, so I'm like, you know, why not? You know, so uh, we're going to be uh, going to a minor league baseball game when we are when we get out there, and so I just enjoy the uh, fellowship with Pastor Tim Goodman, his wife Linda, and then of course beginning Sunday with all of the church people there at the Faith Bible Baptist Church, and it will be live streamed by Faith Bible Baptist Church, as well as myself, on my Facebook page. So that way you'll be able to uh, tune in uh, to the conference if you are not able to make it. And so we're looking forward to being with everybody there. Uh, on today's broadcast, I'm going to be talking about the Valley of Hinnom and the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh, one of the three valleys in the city of Jerusalem and how those valleys form or are connected to form the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself. That's why I want you to have your Bibles open, write down some notes, and to follow along as we look at the Valley of Hinnom and the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, will play a major role in Bible prophecy. When you have an opportunity, we have a newsletter going out later on today, and I want you to subscribe to our newsletters. They go out every single week. You can do that by going to my website, www.todayinbibleprophecy.org. And when you're there, click on newsletter sign up. 
the navigation bar above, second to right. And then uh, it'll take you to this page. Give us your email address, your name, and just request that you want to receive our free newsletters. And again, they go out every single week in which I write articles on Bible prophecy. I list the 10 leading news stories of the week. I put a video on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. My speaking schedule is also on there as well. We'll give you updates and happenings going on right here in the ministry. And I'm also excited, very excited, because our Bible prophecy tour to Israel is less, and I mean less, than three weeks away. But you still have time to join us on this Bible prophecy trip of a lifetime. All the arrangements are being made by Royal Travel. They're based out of Israel, uh, but their founder lives in New York, Gideon Lev. He's my tour agent. If you want to join us in Israel next month, less than three weeks away, <clears throat> excuse me, you still have time to join us. If you want me to send you that brochure you see on the screen, you contact me and just let me know you want the brochure. We'll send it via email. It will have the itinerary on there as well as a link for payment if you decide to go. This is going to be a trip of a lifetime. Ten days with two nights in Jordan. We'll be in North Jordan at Mount Nebo where Moses viewed the promised land. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 49, and 50. And South Jordan at Petra, where we believe the Jews will be held up for the last half of the tribulation period. And so I will teach you Bible prophecy on location in Israel and in Jordan. So if you would like to join us in three weeks, less than three weeks, in the land of promise, prophecy, and in the future, primacy. Get a hold of us as soon as possible. September 14th through the 24th for the Israel Jordan Bible Prophecy Tour. And I'm telling you, folks, this is going to be the trip of a lifetime. Right now, you can follow me and these live streams on the social networks. Right now, we are live streaming on Facebook. We are live streaming on YouTube. And we are live streaming on Twitter. <clears throat> Those are the three social networks I am on right now. My Facebook page is public. Send me a, fan, a friend request. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is my name, August Rosado, like it is on my Facebook page. And hit that subscribe button. You might have to create a free <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube account to do so. And once you've done that, then you can subscribe to my channel. We got... 754 subscribers right now. I want to reach a thousand. Help me reach 1,000 subscribers. And you can do that by hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of new videos that we upload. And on Twitter, I list all the late breaking news stories right there on my Twitter page. My Twitter page feeds into my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. So, Follow me on Twitter by looking at my handle, at Bible underscore prophecy. That's my Twitter handle, at Bible underscore prophecy. Or August Rosado, at Bible underscore prophecy. And you'll be notified of all the late breaking news stories I list right there on Twitter. And I am excited about my brand new book, The Political, Set on the Stage for the Prophetic. To be fulfilled. And we are excited about the book. And it is right now at the publishers. Being printed as we speak. The book is $18 plus $4 shipping and handling. And I will autograph that book and make sure that you get it. And this is my, I believe it's my seventh book that I have uh, written. 
And it is a book that deals with the politic, the geo political activities right now going on in the world. The political set on the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. And so if you would like a copy of this book or multiple copies, then all you simply need to do is go to the PayPal link that I just had right there on the screen, www.paypal.me slash tbpm. It's $18 plus $4 shipping and handling. I will autograph the book for you, order multiple copies to give to lost loved ones, lost friends who need to get saved. Uh, we have the plan of salvation in there. So that way they can read it and see how close we may be to Jesus soon return. So purchase a copy of my brand new book, The Political, Set in the Stage for the Prophetic, to be fulfilled. And I hope that this book will be a blessing to you. I am going to start working on a booklet uh, of just somewhat Bible study materials. And I'm going to also be working on another book of putting all of my sermons in sermon form for you to use, whether to preach or to teach Sunday school. All of those projects are going to be coming up soon. So keep, uh, please keep that in prayer. And so right now, this is my new book, The Political Set in the Stage for the Prophetic to be fulfilled. And I hope and pray, again, that this book will be a blessing to you, to help you better understand the geopolitical activities of the world, how close we may be to Jesus soon return. Again, $18 plus $4 shipping and handling. And we'll make sure that it's autographed. And that book is sent right out to you. So we are really, uh, really excited about this book. And folks, if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully support this last day's ministry. As we look at the political set on the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled, the geopolitical activities and what the Bible says will happen not only in the last days now, but what will happen in the end times of a future seven-year period of tribulation. You know, the church is too busy today fighting, bickering, arguing over doctrinal issues, being sarcastic and mean-spirited toward one another. And I'm not telling you nothing new. But you know something? I have bigger fish to fry. And I simply don't waste my time with such Christians. I got bigger fish to fry. You said, well, what do you mean by that? Here's what I mean by that. Souls are dying and going to hell. And what are you doing about it? I got bigger fish to fry. And I want to use the wonderful doctrine of Bible prophecy to win the lost at any cost. That's why I appreciate my pastor, Tony Barboza. East Bay Baptist Church, East Providence, Rhode Island. He says, oh, you know something? I don't bother engaging with such people either. With nothing better to do. They waste my time, but more importantly, they waste God's time. And that's the reason why my church has various ministries reaching out to our very community through food pantry. My pastor was even criticized by Christians for having a food pantry. Go figure. That's between them and God. Uh, but they reach out to the community with food pantries. Um, they don't like to use the word carnival or nothing like that. But they have a lot of activities that they want to do with the community. But at the same time, share the gospel with them. They place door hangers on doors in the neighborhood, you know, of information with our, our church. And so that's what I appreciate about my pastor. He has a heart to want to win people to the Lord. He has a heart to reach out to the community. I have a heart to want to use Bible prophecy to
to reach out to Jews and Gentiles, which is why I go to Israel with Dr. Todd Baker three times a year, evangelizing and sharing the gospel with the Jewish people. The church today, they drop the ball on that. They don't even bother with that. Or they'll even criticize me for doing that. Wow. And, you know, when I uh, listed a thing on the Baptist uh, Pulpit Supply Facebook website about our ministry and how we go to Israel four times a year, of course, the sarcasms are coming in. Not by the world, not by unbelievers, by Christians. Oh, you go to Israel four times a year? Question mark. Why is that so hard for you to believe? <laughs> I mean, wow, man. And, you know, the condition in the church today, folks, it is getting bad. It's getting really, really bad. Not only with the heresy and the apostasy that Christians have fallen into, but the, the mean-spirited attitude coming from a lot of believers and pastors for that matter, which just, it just makes me keep my distance. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. But I know that I have a job to do, and so do you. So let's get out of the great omission and get back to the great commission. To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's what we're doing here at Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. And that's why I encourage you to pray about what the Lord would have you to do to support this ministry. And you can do that by using a PayPal link that you see right there on your screen. PayPal.me slash TBPM. I hope and pray. Uh, that you would jump on board and help it to support this ministry. All right, let's get into it. I know we started a little late, but better late than never. The Valley of Hinnom and the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to open up the two passages. Jeremiah chapter 7, 31 and 32, and Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. But before you do that, as usual, I'd like to acknowledge our friends, people who have stood by our ministry, who have encouraged us, support us, and pray for us. Encouragement today amongst Christians in the church is becoming rare. Because again, all they know how to do is bicker, criticize, and leave sarcastic comments. I want nothing to do with such people, but I appreciate people like Artemio Cruz, who's right now watching via uh, YouTube, and those that are right now watching on uh, Facebook. And, of course, uh, we got uh, those watching right now, Amanda Tatro and uh, Greta Sims Emery, friends and supporters of this ministry, and Brother Michael Post. Michael, I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Hope everything's well. Michael usually watches on YouTube, and now he's on Facebook watching, which you have that option. Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. And uh, we really appreciate our dear friends taking time out of their busy schedule to watch us. All right, let's look at these two passages right here. I want you to look with me at uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, 31 and 32. It says this. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. Now with that said, I direct your attention to Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. For, behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The valley of Hinnom and the valley of Jehoshaphat. 
Now, when I take my tour groups to Israel and we're in the old city of Jerusalem, I always point out to them the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which is on the western side of the city. The valleys in the city of Jerusalem today are the Hinnom Valley to the west, and then in the center, the Tyropian Valley, also known as the Valley of the Cheesemakers, and the Kidron Valley to the east. These valleys are mentioned in the word of God. So we are looking at three valleys. Again, we got the Hinnom Valley. It looks so beautiful today. It's a walking park. But back then, in ancient biblical times, the Canaanites used that valley to burn their children alive, sacrificing them to the Canaanite god, Molech, burying those bodies of their children, their infants, right there in the Hinnom Valley. And then we have the Tyropian Valley, again, known as the Valley of the Cheesemakers. And the Tyropian Valley was the main pilgrim route. The street that you're looking at right there is a 2,000-year-old street that were used by pilgrims making their way to the temple. And no doubt Jesus and his disciples walked that very street that you're looking at right now. To the left would be the remains of Jewish merchant shops where they bought and sold sheep, goats, doves, the half shekel coin. And you can still, still, still see the remains of that from 2,000 years ago. In the distance there, you see the pile of stones. Well, that was left over from the Roman destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, where they pushed those stones over the wall and came down with such force that you can notice the road has been caved in. So that is the Tyropian Valley, or the Valley of the Cheesemakers. And then to the east would be the Kidron Valley. That would be the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And Jesus and his disciples would have crossed, frequently crossed that valley, either going to the Mount of Olives to the east or to the Temple Mount to the west. So those are the three valleys that are mentioned in the Word of God. But I want to focus on two of the valleys. That's what I want to talk about on today's broadcast, the Hinnom Valley and the Valley of Jehoshaphat. These valleys in Jerusalem played a significant role in biblical times. As I said, the Hinnom Valley is on the western side of the old city from the Temple Mount. And the Valley of Jehoshaphat would be on the eastern side. So looking at this aerial view, you'll notice the Hinnom Valley to the west, the Kidron Valley to the east, and the center would be the Tyropian Valley. But you will notice something significant by the highlight that you see on the screen. The highlight in the dark yellow and the highlight in the green to the right. But I'm going to show you another picture as to what it actually forms. The... Hinnom Valley to the west and the Kedron Valley to the east side of the old city of the Temple Mount. And again, in between both those valleys would be the Tyropian Valley. Again, known as the Valley of the Cheesemakers where they bought and sold during the Second Temple period. The Valley of Hinnom 
went by two names in scriptures. And these names are Tophet and Hinnom. And again, we brought that out uh, as we read Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 31 and 32. It's called Tophet or Hinnom in verse 31. And in verse 32, the valley of slaughter. Because, man, it was a slaughter in that valley during the time of the Canaanites. We're talking nearly 4,000 years ago. The fires burned continuously. The, the, the stench of death was so overwhelming during that time. And during the second temple period, in the time of Jesus, it was a garbage refuge to remind the the Israelites during that time of what happened there when the Canaanites were slaughtering their children left and right. So again, today it's a beautiful park, but in biblical times during the time of the Canaanites, Jeremiah chapter 7, 31 and 32, called it Tophet, Hinnom Valley, or in verse 32, the Valley of Slaughter. Dr. Todd Baker and I went into the Hinnom Valley, and we did a study lesson there that you can watch on my YouTube page. That's why I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I found a either a 2,000 or a 3,000-year-old jar handle right there in the Hinnom Valley that I have in my home in my antiquities case. And that is where these Canaanites slaughtered, butchered, burned their children alive in that very valley. Abs can you imagine an absolutely barbaric inhumane, if you will. Its name was changed to slaughter, where they sacrificed their own children to Molech, the Canaanite god, buried them in the valley until Jeremiah 7.32 tells us they ran out of burial space. Can you imagine digging up that place today? You would find human remains. I mean, I'm talking all the way down, man. All these valleys, the Hinnom Valley, the Tyropian Valley, and the Kidron Valley, they're all connected. And I believe there's a reason why they're all connected. Those valleys are all connected to form the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Sheen. S-H-I-N. It has the S-H sound. And again, folks, I, I don't believe that that is a coincidence. Again, looking at an aerial view of the Hinnom Valley to the west, the Tyropian Valley to the center, and the Kidron Valley to the east. All those valleys are connected. And they're connected to form the Hebrew letter Sheen. Looks like a W. Sheen, where we get Shaddai or El Shaddai. God Almighty. It is no accident that those valleys are connected to form the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Sheen, Shaddai, El Shaddai. Why? God's name is in the city of Jerusalem. His name in the eternal capital of the Jewish people since King David took the stronghold of Zion in 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse number 7. God's name is eternally in that city. 
and looking at that aerial view from space and looking at the outline drawn there, the Hannum Valley to the west, the Tyropian Valley in the center, and the Kidron Valley to the east. Connected, all formed. 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Sheen. God's name, ladies and gentlemen, is in that very city. <clears throat> and that's what he says <clears throat> in Second uh, Chronicles, uh, chapter 6, and verse number 6. He says, but I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be, be there forever, and have chosen David to be over my people, <clears throat> Israel. God placed his name eternally in the city of the great king. Jesus calls it in Matthew 5, 35, the city of the great king, or he would have said it in Hebrew, Yerushalayim Ur Shel HaMelech HaGadol. Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Well, how do you know he said it in Hebrew? Give me a break. The, the, the Jews in Jerusalem, as I said, I, I have to be repetitious, folks, because sometimes people just don't get it. The Jews in Jerusalem spoke Hebrew because the Jewish temples were there. And it's the city of the great king. It's the holy city of God. The Jews in the Galilee, in the north, spoke Aramaic. The Jews in the Galilee, when they came to Jerusalem for the three main pilgrim feasts of Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, the Jews in Jerusalem recognized the Jews in the Galilee as having an accent because they spoke Aramaic. Which is why they looked at Peter shortly after Jesus' arrest and said, you're from the Galilee. Your speech betrayeth thee. You have an accent. So the Jews in Jerusalem spoke Hebrew. So when Jesus said in Matthew 5.35, the city of the great king, he said it in Hebrew because he was in Jerusalem at the time. Yerushalayim ur shel hamelech gadol. Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Because we know that one day the king of kings and the lord of lords will reign from that very city at his second coming back to this earth at the end of the tribulation period to establish his kingdom for 1,000 years. The valley of Jehoshaphat is also known as the Kidron Valley in the New Testament. Kidron Valley separates the Mount of Olives to the east from the Temple Mount to the west. I've taken my uh, tour groups over there into the uh, the Kidron Valley. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful valley. Now, Jesus and his disciples frequently cross the Kidron Valley to either go to the Mount of Olives or the Temple Mount. And David's rebellious son, Absalom, was killed in the Kidron Valley by one of David's men, Joab, or Yoav. And his traditional tomb is there today. We read in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 18 and verse number 18 that before his death, Absalom reared up a tomb in the Kidron Valley. And his tomb is there to that very day. Now, we don't know if what you're looking at is the exact tomb. Probably isn't. But the Israelis there today in Jerusalem refer to that tomb that you're looking at as the tomb of Absalom. Right near it, to the right, would be the traditional tomb of the Jewish prophet Haggai. And you can't see it on the screen, but to the right of that would be the traditional tomb of the Jewish prophet Zechariah. But that snow cone shape pillar there is the traditional tomb of Absalom. And we know he was killed by Joab in the Kidron Valley, but we don't know if that is the exact 
to them. And that's the reason why I need to come to Israel, folks, and see these things with your own eyes. Absolutely amazing. The Valley of Jehoshaphat should not, and I repeat, should not be confused with the Jezreel Valley, which is north of the state of Israel. As you view it from Megiddo, I take my tour groups to Megiddo, and I teach them Bible prophecy on location. The Jezreel Valley is also known in Revelation chapter 16 and verse number 16 as Armageddon. And again, you're looking at the Jezreel Valley from Megiddo. And notice where the two palm trees are right there. Tour groups go right to that very area. And they view the Jezreel Valley in the forefront from that area. You are looking at Armageddon. Revelation 16, 16 says, And he gathered them together into a place called in Ivri, the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And that is where all the nations of the world will gather to prepare to make war against him who sat on the horse at his second coming back to this earth. We never find in scripture the phrase battle of Armageddon. We don't find that. But we do find in Revelation 16, 16, they gather at Armageddon. Gather for what? In preparation to make war against him, the Lord Jesus. And, you know, that valley is big enough to hold hundreds of thousands of troops. And one day that will happen. You know, the late Dr. Jimmy DeYoung said that, you know, there are 190 nations in the world today. Let's just say, for example, 100 nations invade the Jezreel Valley. And those 100 nations produce 1 million soldiers apiece. Well, now you have 100 million soldiers in the Jezreel Valley. It can easily hold that many armies. 100 million soldiers slain could produce 600 million quarts of blood. That's 50 quarts per foot for the space of 1,600 furlongs, according to Revelation 14.20. Well, 1,600 uh, furlongs is about 176 miles from the Jezreel Valley to the entrance to Petra in southern Jordan, where the Jews will be held up for the last half of the tribulation period. And so that is Armageddon. And you will see that with your own eyes when you come on one of our Bible prophecy tours to Israel. I hope you come with us next month. There's still room for you to come. We're less than three weeks away. All nations will gather in the Jezreel Valley to prepare, not battle, prepare, Revelation 16, 16 says, to make war against him at his second coming to earth at the end of the 70th week, at the end of the seven-year period of tribulation. Revelation 17, 14 tells us, these shall make war with the Lamb, but the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Jesus will win that war. The decision will be made right there. It will be decisive. It will be quick. And Jesus will reign as King of kings. So, the nations that invade the Jezreel Valley in preparation for this war, they march from north all the way to the south, to the holy city of Jerusalem, where the battle will take place. Now there's mention of a battle. And that battle is mentioned in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse number 2. 
where God says, I will gather all nations to Jerusalem for battle. In Revelation 16, 16, doesn't mention a battle. It just says, um, and he gathered them together into a place called the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. They make their way south from the Jezreel Valley up north to the south of Jerusalem, where a battle will take place. And that is the battle for Jerusalem. God says, I will gather, uh, God said, I will take all nations to Jerusalem. The battle for Jerusalem, where God will meet them head on to defend his city. I will gather all nations to Jerusalem. For a battle. That's not to say that that battle will also make its way all the way up to the Jezreel Valley, but the battle begins at Jerusalem and then it will just expand from there. And you know something? I remember it was uh, a few years back actually that um, Time Magazine came out with the title The Battle for Jerusalem. The world rejects Israel's claim to Jerusalem as their capital. But the Bible is unambiguous here. Jerusalem has always been the eternal capital of the Jewish people since King David took it in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 7. It says, nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is Ur David, city of David. And then Time Magazine some time ago came out with this article, The Battle for Jerusalem. It's all about the city of Jerusalem. The world today doesn't recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The Vatican says it's not the capital of Israel, but it should be an international capital, not the capital of anyone specific. But the Bible specific, Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish people. And that's been the case, folks, for nearly 3,000 years, a little over 3,000 years. In the Hinnom Valley, the Canaanites made their children pass through the fire. In Jesus' day, it was a garbage refuge in, this, in the first century A.D., 2,000 years ago. In the future, Israel's enemies will try to make Israel pass through the fire by trying to annihilate them, to destroy them, to wipe them off the face of the map as Iran calls for every single day. Folks, the enemies of the Jewish state will try to destroy the Jewish people by marching from Jezreel to the north to Jerusalem to the south to go into the Kidron Valley, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, to wipe out the Jews and take Jerusalem as their own. That's the reason why we read in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14, God said, I am jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. I'm disturbed. When I hear preachers or Christians for that matter that say, I'm a dispensationalist, but I'm a non Zionist. That's just like saying, I'm a Protestant Catholic. That's a, it's an oxymoron in terms. If you believe in the Bible, if you believe God gave the land to the Jewish people, if you believe Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people, I have a news for you. You're a Zionist. Look up the word Zionism and its definition. Look up the word Christian Zionist. I had a guy tell me that on Facebook. I'm a dispensationalist, non-Zionist. That Zionist, that is one of the most ignorant statements I have ever heard. A Christian Zionist is one who believes in the word of God, and God's promises for the Jewish people. That will never be yet, never be abrogated. God said, I am jealous for Jerusalem and Zion with great jealousy. Zechariah 1.14. In the literal Hebrew, God says, I am aggressively, 
possessive of Jerusalem. Then, in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15, the following verse, God said, I am very sore displeased with the heathen, the Gentiles, the Goyim. He says, I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. In other words, in the literal Hebrew, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. God said, I was upset, but now they've ticked me off. Now I'm angry, and my judgment will fall upon the heathen. Now, according to the World Israel News, they opened up uh, a theme park right there in the Hinnom Valley. It's a it's a brand new park in the Hinnom Valley outside of Jerusalem uh, where tourists today can discover the roots in the book of Joshua, which is where the concept of hell originates, according to the article. The neighborhood has been rehabilitated because, you know, there were some drug dealers and stuff like that there by the City of David organization, producing, producing uh, a lush environment where tourists can sample food, ancient bread, and olive oil created using ancient methods that they did in biblical times. And so when you visit the Hinnom Valley, you can go there and check these things out. However, Bible prophecy calls for all nations to invade the Kidron Valley and seek to eliminate the Jews and take Jerusalem. God will meet them head on in the Kidron Valley, and he's going to destroy these very nations. And, folks, this is what we read about in Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. When the Jews are in the land back from the captivity, the nations in the future will seek to destroy the chosen people of God. God said he will bring all nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And he will meet those nations head on. Again, do not confuse the Jezreel Valley in the north of Israel with the valley of Jehoshaphat in the south in the city of Jerusalem. We're looking at two different valleys here. God will judge the nations of the world in the valley of Jehoshaphat. And then we read in Joel chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, God will bring the heathen into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and he will there judge them. And then God will crush them like grapes in a wine vat until that blood flows. Well, that's parallel to Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. And the nations were cast into the wine vat and crushed until the blood flows for the space of 1,600 furlongs. That's 176 miles from the Jezreel Valley, north Armageddon, to the entrance to Petra in South Jordan. Again, where the Jews are held up for the last half of the tribulation period, uh, Revelation 12, 6, Revelation 12, and verse number 14. The Kidron Valley is also called the Valley of Decision, where the final decision will come about and the nations destroy when they attack Jerusalem. And from there, Jesus will establish his kingdom from the holy city of Jerusalem for 1,000 years. And then, as Jesus said in Matthew 5.35, Jerusalem will be Yerushalayim Ur Shel HaMelech HaGadol. Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Because he's coming back, according to Revelation 19.16, as a king of kings and the Lord of lords. 1 Timothy 6.15 tells us, which in his times, he shall show who is the true and only potentate, the king of kings 
and the Lord of Lords. And the verse we shared earlier, Revelation 17, 14. He shall make war with the Lamb, but the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Who's that coming back with them that are called, chosen, and faithful? You, the church, coming back with them. Revelation 19, 14. And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. A simple look at the plain sense interpretation of Scripture makes everything fall into place. Makes sense. Minus the hype, drama, and sensationalism. As Dr. Ed Heinsen, the late Dr. Ed Heinsen, used to say, make the main thing the plain thing. Keep Bible prophecy simple. Oh, but these people in the church say just don't know how to do that. Want to think outside the box. Want to make a name for themselves. Sell a whole lot of books. You know, get their face out there on TV and magazines today. No. Nah. Keep the main thing the plain thing. Keep Bible prophecy simple. But today in the church, all we want is entertainment, sensationalism, thinking outside the box. If you're coming here, so today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, you might as well go somewhere else because you're not going to find that here. You're not going to find that here. I have learned from solid Bible Prophecy teachers over the years, like the late Dr. Zola Levitt, the late Dr. Thomas McCall, the late Dr. Ed Heinsen, the late Dr. Jimmy DeYoung, Dr. Dave Reagan, Lamb and Lion Ministries. I have learned from the best over the years. And that's not to say that there's some minor disagreements with some of these guys. Very, very minor. But they were such solid Bible prophecy teachers. All those guys have passed on today with the exception of Dr. Dave Reagan. But they taught solid eschatology. Minus hype, drama, sensationalism. And that's what we do here at Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. Folks, in closing, I believe the stage is being set for the end time scenario to be carried out as Israel's enemies are getting into position to attack her and take the city of Jerusalem. That signifies that the next main event we call the rapture of the church must be so very close at hand. And that's why we pray, Maranatha, even so come, Lord Jesus. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow just might be too late. Get saved today. I'm tired of this great omission in the church today of conflicts, fights, wars. That's what James talked about. From whence comes wars and fightings among you. That's the norm in Christian churches today. I don't care what the denomination is. That's the norm in Christian churches today. We have departed from biblical concepts. We no longer have a biblical world view. It's gone. We need to get back to a biblical worldview and biblical concepts. Get back to the Great Commission to win the lost at any cost. And you know, it's sad today that people that I have talked to, they haven't been in church in years. They got saved. They got born again. But I said, well, how come you're not in church anymore? I'll never, ever, ever step foot in another church again. Because somebody in the church, with their snide comments and rude remarks, don't think before they speak, offended somebody and they never saw them again. That's blood on your hands right there. And I, for one, 
don't want that. I told you already, I got bigger fish to fry. And that is to win the loss, Jews and Gentiles, to win the loss at any cost. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. And be ready for the next main event we call the rapture of the church, which could even be today. All we can say to that is Maranatha, even so come, Lord Jesus. So, folks, as we bring this broadcast to a close, please remember there will be no live stream tomorrow. Actually, there ain't going to be any live streaming all next week either. Why? We're in the midst of this prophecy conference in Ohio. That conference will begin this Sunday, going into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And that will be at Faith Bible Baptist Church in Toledo, Ohio, August 28th to September 1st, 2022. And so there will be no live streaming all next week. So please keep that in mind. But we will live stream the conference itself. So you can tune in Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then Friday, next Friday is another travel day. So there will be no live streaming. All next week, there will be no live streaming tomorrow. So just want to give all of you a heads up on that, okay? So please pray for us for Traveling Mercies tomorrow. And pray for us as we make our way to Ohio, the Faith Bible Baptist Church in Toledo. Looking forward to seeing all of our friends out there. It's been at least five, I don't know, five, six years or so since we been to Ohio, to the Midwest. So we're looking forward to going back and seeing all of our friends and making new friends right there at Faith Bible Baptist Church, Toledo, Ohio. So if you live in Toledo, Wallbridge, any of those surrounding areas, come on out. Faith Bible Baptist Church, we would love to see you. And again, folks, if, if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully consider helping to support our ministry. Uh, you know, we do this full time. We live by faith. My wife and I have been living by faith since 2008, and God has never let us down. He will never let us down. He's always faithful. Even when we are unfaithful, he still remains faithful. He can't deny himself, the Bible tells us. And so if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully consider supporting Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. You can do that one of two ways. Use the PayPal link that you see right there on the screen in the rolling screen there. PayPal.me slash TB. PM, the abbreviation for Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. PayPal.me slash TB PM. Or you can mail your support to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 143 Grove Street, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. If I may, by way of chasing a rabbit, people who get my physical mail and address, they don't do that at times. It doesn't happen all the time, but when they get my physical mail and address, whether it's from Facebook or from YouTube, they take advantage of that to send me a book that they that they wrote. May I just say to all of you watching right now, don't send me your books. You know why? They're just going to go in the trash. I don't have time to read other people's books, and I don't have time to give them a critique. Just by looking at the title and the subtitle, I already got red flags going off. 
already got red flags going off. So if you send me your book in the mail, I don't know you from a hole in the wall. I'm going to file it under the letter T, trash. I don't mean to be unkind or mean-spirited here. I don't. I don't read anybody else's books that I am not familiar with. I don't care who they are. So don't send, don't take advantage using my physical address to send me your books or your booklet. They're just going to go right in the trash. I put my physical address on there for people who've been blessed by this ministry to send their support or orders for our materials. But if you're going to take advantage of that to send me your books to try to straighten me out or whatever, it's not going to happen. It's going in the trash. So I'm giving everybody a heads up on that. I had one person send me a, I think it was a six, and it was somebody local. And they didn't put their name, their not, nothing, their address, return nothing on the envelope. So somebody acted like a coward. And um, they sent me a, a six-part DVD promoting the post-tribulation rapture. And the people that were on there are heretics to the core. Heretics to the core. Not because they are promoting the post rapture, but because of the other things that they believe. Other doctrinal issues. And they were just straight up heretics. And so I, what, I, what did I do? I filed it under the letter T. Trash. So that ain't going to wash here. I put the address on there. For those of you who've been watching this for a while, blessed by our studies, to send your support. So you can do that by using the physical address or the PayPal link that you see right there on the screen. And again, folks, subscribe to our Bible Prophecy newsletters by going to my website today in Bible Prophecy. Dot org. I hope that you do that. And it's not too late, even though we're less than three weeks away, for you to join us in the land of Israel, September 14th through the 24th, 2022. So please join us in the land of promise, prophecy in the future, privacy, where the King of Kings will rule and reign your home for 1,000 years. So if you want me to send you a brochure in your email, please let us know as soon as possible. And again, we'll be traveling to Ohio tomorrow to begin our Bible Prophecy Conference Sunday, August the 20th. So we're looking forward to that. And what I usually do on Friday, since there's going to be no live streaming tomorrow, uh, is what I'm going to do right now is the Berachat Chohanim, Prayer of Aaron, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Uh oh, and by the way, I, I can't I can't forget. You can order my new book. It's it's read at the uh, printers right now. You can order my new book, The Political, set in the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. So let me just move that out of the way so uh, you can see that. And let me re remove the rolling screen there. Um, that's my new book. It's at the uh, printers right now. And... Uh, you can pre-order that book. Pre-order the book by using, again, the link that you see right there on the screen, paypal.me slash tbpm or the physical address that we already uh, uh, showed you. And that book is available, $18 plus $4 shipping and handling. My new book, The Political, set on the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. $18 plus Four dollars shipping and handling. Pre-order the book, and once we get them in, we will send you an autographed copy. Order multiple copies to give out to friends and families that are lost, not saved. So hope and pray that you would do that. My new book, The Political Set on the Stage for the Prophetic to be fulfilled. I hope and pray that this book will be a blessing to you. As I bring this broadcast to a close, I stretch my fingers to form that 21st letter we were talking about 
on today's broadcast. Shin Shaddai, El Shaddai, God Almighty. Just as the uh, Kidron Valley, uh, I should say the, uh, the Hinnom Valley, the Tyropia Valley, and the Kidron Valley all connected to form the 21st letter. Shin Shaddai, El Shaddai. And then Aaron would stretch his fingers toward B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, and he would pray. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his confidence upon thee and give thee peace. And may the Lord give you peace in this, these troubled times in which we live. That can only come through the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. So let me just stop uh, once again before we sign off. Artemio Cruz still holding on there, watching on YouTube. And uh, Stephen Mitch Smith is watching uh, there on uh, Facebook, as well as Amanda, Greta, Michael Popes. And so again, we appreciate uh, all of you. Well, Hope that you all tune in next week to the live stream of our Bible Prophecy Conference from uh, Faith Bible Baptist Church in Toledo, Ohio. And again, that will be August 28th through September 1st. Hope you all make plans to join us either in person or live stream. Remember, there will be no live streaming next week for our Bible Prophecy Updates. No live stream tomorrow. No live streaming next week. So remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we're hoping, Lord willing, to see you all live streaming at the Prophecy Conference. And we'll be back for our um, live stream prophecy updates in a couple of weeks. Talk to you later. God bless.